2024 is definitely shaping up to be quite a year for game releases. Even though we got some spectacular games last year, many that were scheduled for release got delayed either due to studio closures or the strikes, which affected many writers and voice actors. However, as much as my wallet won't be happy, I am incredibly ecstatic to get my hands on some of these wondrous new worlds. Before we begin, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Every new sub helps us achieve our goal and keeps us motivated to creating new content. With that being said, I'm your host, Raging Anybody, and here are 10 upcoming games we are hyped about. Number 1, Dragon's Dogma 2. Sequel to Capcom's 2012 sleeper hit, fans have been eagerly awaiting the release of any kind of DLC or continuation set in the world of Granzis. Before games like Monster Hunter World swept through the gaming world by storm, Dragon's Dogma introduced interesting third-person monster hunting combat with an intricate combat system and a unique playstyle featuring what the game calls the Pawn System. Player created NPC warriors that they can loan out or rent from other players and use as squad mates. In Dragon's Dogma 2, you take on the role of the Arisen once again, where you encounter a dragon who passes on a choice to you, a prophecy. Gathering your allies, training in your vocations, and equipping yourself with the best gear possible, you set out on your adventure to fulfill your destiny. Now, the combat mechanics look similar to the original game, with some noticeable improvements and tweaks, and a ton of new enemies and monsters to topple. The pawn system makes a return once again, however, there's no word yet on if the game will feature any sort of cooperative play between friends. There is a new danger to your pawns, however, who travel between worlds, something called Dragon's Plague, which, instead of weakening them, seems to make them go into berserker rages and makes them less controllable, so I'm curious to see how that plays out. The game is coming to PlayStation, Xbox, and PC on March 22nd, so make sure to pre-order a copy now. Number 2, Chrono Odyssey. A brand new MMO set in the fantastical world, its gameplay looks like a cross between the Souls games and Black Desert. It's set in a land named Satera, which is now at war with a realm called the Void. What's interesting is, due to this war, several parts of the land exist in alternate timelines, so I'm curious how this will affect the main story. The main factions are the Guardians, the Void, the Broken, the Outcasts, and the World Movers. I don't know if you'll be able to choose which one you join, but given that it is an MMO, I'm gonna assume you can, all except for the Void itself. You get a device called a Chronotector that lets you manipulate space-time, but again, not quite sure how this will affect the story or gameplay itself. Like maybe you can restore destroyed bridges to cross into new territories, or revive fallen NPCs? I doubt you'll be able to use it to change battle outcomes or anything, unless they use it as a reason why you respawn if you should lose. Either way, the game itself looks gorgeous, and I can't wait to hear more about it. It's scheduled for release on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC in Spring 2024. Number 3, Blight Survival. One of the games I'm looking forward to the most. It combines several genres into one. It's a cooperative survival horror game in a fantasy setting with roguelite mechanics. Basically, a dark plague has swept across the land, so you and up to three other players must stand against hordes of undead and other monsters while attempting to reach and destroy the source of the blight. Gameplay kind of reminds me a bit of Dead Space or the Resident Evil remakes, with the over-the-shoulder camera and defensive actions you can perform outside of the standard hacking, slashing, and arrow firing. It even looks as if it boasts some stealth mechanics, which I wonder if that will be affected by some sort of character stats screen or so. They haven't shown in the trailers if you'll be able to customize your character, but I'm going to assume that you can up at least upgrade your weapons and armor and whatnot. The game is releasing on Steam, with full controller support, sometime in fall of this year. Number 4, Nightingale. A survival type game set in an interesting looking time period, not quite medieval, but also not modern day. So maybe a bit steampunk? The plot revolves around you, the Realm Walker, a person able to navigate through various arcane portals into the different Fey realms. Your quest is to find the last human city, Nightingale. However, 
Like most survival games, you'll be able to construct bases and fully explore these individual realms to your heart's content. Which reminds me a bit of how Valheim's portal systems work, except in this game you actually go to entirely different worlds, as it seems. Combat looks interesting. You've got your standard melee style axes, swords, and hammers. But you've also got the ability to eventually build like uh, muskets and possibly wield magic later on. I wonder if that will be based on exploring different regions and learning these upgrades from like different NPCs or so. Graphically, it reminds me a lot of the Fable games, which I've always liked them, so that's not really a bad thing. But if you're looking for more ultra-realism, then you'll probably want to stick to another entry on this list. The game releases to, to, onto Steam into Early Access on February 22nd, so make sure to wishlist it now. Number 5. Phantom Blade Zero It kind of reminds me of Neo, or even like a cross between Ghost of Tsushima and Bloodborne. It looks like it follows a samurai type of character as he cuts his way through a version of Japan that seems to be invaded by several demons. Combat looks fast and feverish, even if the camera seems to be much more up close like other modern day survival horror games. However, not much else has really been revealed about the game other than it seems to be a PlayStation exclusive and boasts a cast of eccentric characters. There's also no release date yet, uh, uh, as far as this recording goes, but rumor has it there will be more info during Sony's State of Play, so be sure to check back for future updates. Hey folks, sorry to interrupt, but we just launched our very own merch store at FatNinja.shop. Uh, we sell everything from t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more, so we would greatly appreciate it if you checked it out. All the proceeds go to our future projects, so uh, it helps us make any kind of you know, movies and, and short films that we want to make in the future. So um, if you got time, check out FatNinja.shop. Uh, thanks again, and uh, back to the video. Number 6, Where Winds Meet. If you're a fan of Dynasty Warriors or the Yakuza franchise, this game seems to be in a similar realm when it comes to its gameplay. You play as a swordsman, fighting various opponents and making tough choices for your clan as you work your way toward being the greatest swordsman alive. The game is open world, as many games these days are, and looks like it plays like most hack and slash style flashy combat driven games. No word yet if you'll be able to create your own custom character, or if you follow in the footsteps of a pre-established person, but it is definitely single player only. The game otherwise looks uh, beautiful, and the gameplay at least looks smooth. It's scheduled to release on PC sometime in the next few months. No word yet if it'll be coming to PlayStation or Xbox anytime after that. Number 7. Avowed Obsidian have made some of the greatest contributions to RPG history, and Avowed looks to do much of the same bringing to life a fantastical island kingdom filled with a variety of biomes, each with their own unique ecosystems and cultures. Combat mixes melee with guns in a stunning first-person play experience. It takes place in the Pillars of Eternity universe, for those of you familiar with the franchise, but this time allows for open-world exploration. Built with Unreal Engine 5, it of course looks visually stunning, and gameplay looks plenty smooth in what they've shown so far. Sadly, they announced that cooperative play would not be implemented. I'm still dying for a game made by Obsidian that's co-op ever since their cancelled Alien game. The story is said to be a prequel to the events of Pillars of Eternity, focusing on the heroes who built the Aedir Empire before they were all betrayed. The game is set to release on Xbox and PC in mid-2024 and will be available on Game Pass Day 1 as well. Number 8, Rise of the Ronin. Developed by Team Ninja, the guys behind the Neo games, this looks like their version of Ghost of Tsushima, complete with breathtaking, realistic rendering of 19th century Japan. During the final days of the Edo period, the Tokugawa Shogunate is at war with various factions who want to overthrow them, displeased because of the Western influences that were taking hold after Japan reopened its borders to white merchants and the like. You control a custom character of your own design, but I'm not quite sure if you fight for the Shogun or against him. 
However, given the time period, you will be able to wield both katanas and firearms, which promises to make combat interesting. You'll be able to fully explore historic cities such as Yokohama, Kyoto, and Edo, and aside from traveling by foot or by horseback, you'll also have access to grappling hooks and gliders. I expect combat to be more strategic rather than straight up hack and slash, kind of like the Soul series, so it might not be for everyone. The game releases, releases exclusively on PlayStation on March 22nd. Number 9, Black Myth Wukong. This game was announced all the way back in like 2020, and I have been dying to play it. As a huge fan of the Soul series, this game is right up my alley in terms of gameplay. And then there's the story. For those of you familiar with it, it's based on the Journey to the West, the story of the Monkey King, who incidentally you play as. As you venture across various mystical lands and meet some crazy looking and unique characters along the way, you must uncover the truth behind the legends of your own destiny. Initial gameplay looks like it focuses mainly on melee combat and varying traversal mechanics. However, some videos show you absorbing the abilities of bosses, so perhaps you'll be able to switch between them kind of like how Mega Man uses the power of bosses he defeats. The game is simply jaw-dropping, from simple details like leaving footprints in the snow to how the world changes when you transform into a different kind of creature, such as a fly or a giant boar or so forth. Scheduled for release on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC, it will be out on August 20th, so make sure to mark your calendars. Number 10, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The sequel to Final Fantasy VII Remake, this one sees the second disc translated into modern day, with slight changes to the story, new areas, new characters, and new mechanics. Now, I gotta confess, I never played the original Final Fantasy VII before playing the remake, but eventually I did, and the theory that the original game was just a dream Aerith had, and that the new games are her playing out the events with the prior knowledge of how things are going to go, really sticks in my mind, but there just isn't enough evidence yet to fully prove that, so I can't wait to play the new installment and see if it disproves it or supports it. Sadly, you won't be able to import your save game from part one into this one, which I don't understand, as you had to make some story-altering choices in that game that now don't seem to matter. It also means that for some reason, when you start the game, your character will be yet again depowered, forcing you to grind all over again and whatnot. But I won't let that stop me, as it otherwise looks amazing, and I've been itching for more Final Fantasy after completely smashing 16. The game releases on PlayStation on February 29th, no word yet if it will come to PC or Xbox down the road. Thanks for checking out the video! Which games are you looking forward to the most? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. You can reach out to us on Twitter or X at Studios Fat, or chat with us on Discord, which is linked below in the description. We also recently opened up our very own merch store over at FatNinja.shop, so be sure to check that out. I've been your host, Raging Antibody. Thanks again, and see you on the game.